All right, the SEC's first step toward reforming money market funds goes into effect tomorrow. The reform requires funds maintain a portion of their portfolios and holdings that can be easily sold even when the market is volatile. It also requires that they reduce the long-term debt exposure of their portfolios and improve the quality of their portfolio securities. The hope is that the new amendments will help money market funds become more resilient to market risks and protect uh, investors. Joining us from Boston to discuss the implications of these changes is Bloomberg contributor Bob Posen. Bob is chairman of MFS Investment Management and last year outlined his prescription for reform in his book, Too Big to Save, How to Fix the U.S. Financial System. Bob, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let's talk first about why this is necessary. I mean, is it uh, the fact that investors have simply come to expect money market funds to never break the buck and uh, even getting near that or happening once or twice is enough to scare the life out of uh, some regulators? I think that's pretty much true. Uh, although the prospectus says that these funds aren't guaranteed, uh, investors have come to see this as a, a pretty sure bet. And so by reducing the maturity, requiring higher quality, keeping liquidity, uh, we've taken an event which has only occurred once or twice in the last 20 years, and hopefully uh, it will occur even less. Did, did money market fund investors get a little bit too brazen? I mean, were they taking risks that they uh, should not have been? Well, I don't think that they were really taking risks that they should not have been. What really happened during the crisis was that institutional investors who put large money amounts in these funds uh, they were the ones who moved quickly in and out, and that was the fund that broke a buck. And uh, most retail investors are not as uh, uh, quick on the trigger as these big institutional money market uh, investors. So that, that, those are really the ones uh, that you really have to watch for. Bob, let me, let me just break in. Break the buck on a money market means when the, the net asset value falls below a buck. So let's just put that out there for everybody. It doesn't happen a lot. So was reform needed in your view? Well, I think it probably was just to make sure that uh, there, it wouldn't even, it happened once in this crisis, as I said, to an institutional fund. Right. Uh, but um, in this I century. think it probably was, it was needed to shorten the maturity and do these other things to give people more comfort. Now, the interesting thing is, like a lot of these changes, they've had secondary and tertiary effects. And because of these changes, you can already see it in the euro market. Remember, there are about $2 trillion of money market funds that can buy euro commercial paper from banks. But because of these shorter maturities, higher quality requirements, uh, they've become very reluctant to do so. And just the practical thing, if you're a money market fund manager and there's a little risk in a 30-day piece of paper or a week piece of paper, you shy away from it. So I think one of the things that we're seeing already, even though the rules come into effect tomorrow, we're already seeing paper, commercial paper rates in Europe go up because money market funds, uh, $2 trillion, are shying away from the risk that they perceive in Europe. Yeah, and, and our own Michael McKee points out that a lot of analysts are saying the reason that we see a rise in LIBOR, the LIBOR rate, is uh, because possibly because of these changes. Now, that is supposed to measure the willingness of banks, or we take it to measure the willingness of banks to lend to each other overnight. But do you see that level move because of these rules, this cheese changes? Well, I think there are several factors. One is these rules are clearly a factor. But second of all, the ECB has, the European Central Bank, has made it very easy for banks to deposit money there and pay them a rate. And you see lots of euro banks, instead of lending to each other, are putting money on deposit at the European Central Bank, which gives them less yield, but they feel it's safer. So I think you're seeing two groups, two pretty significant groups of buyers of commercial paper taking very conservative stances here. All right, we're going to leave it on that note. Hey, Bob, thank you so much. Bloomberg contributing editor Bob Posen of MFS Investment Management.